Productions and Tyrone Jackson Springfield. We stand by. Deception, nothing, um, nothing looks as a Jackie White here, we had Tobias Fox, and we have my special co-host for today's evening. We have Ms. Jahada Sharif from the Creative Spirits of the State of New Jersey. I'd like to welcome all of y'all to the show. Thank you, thank and we'd you. like to thank you for having us. Boy, it's a pleasure having you. <laughs> I've worked with you many of times. So um, we're going to get the show started. What I'm going to do, as I normally do, I'm going to ask each of my <coughs> guests to introduce themselves and tell a little bit about themselves, and then I'm going to turn it over to my special co-host for the evening to open up the interview, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. Well, I'm Jahada Sharif, the founder of the Creative Spirits of the State of New Jersey. I'm Jackie White, the author of Deception, Nothing Is As It Seems. I am Tobias Fox, author, editor, publisher of In-House Publishing, and publisher of Jackie White's novel, Deception, Nothing Is As It Seems. Thank you, guys. Jahada? Okay, well, first of all, I would just like to say Tobias is also a writer and he has been encouraging young children to write from a very early age for many years. He used to volunteer to teach children under creative spirits and this is how we met. Mm. And um, he eventually grew up as a student at Mount Clare State College mm -hmm. and recently he started his own publishing company. And I met Mrs. White, Jackie, we call her, through Tobias. Never thought of her being a writer and such a very good writer, I must say. Thank you. <laughs> and we want to really talk about this book. And it was so many things that about this book I want to talk about, mm -hmm. reading it, especially the ending. Okay. The ending was so spiritual to me. Mm -hmm. It fooled me at the very end. <laughs> and then when I got to the last page of it, I was even more impressed. Mm -hmm. So, um... Can we show the viewers the cover of it? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And I also want to talk about the package. So could we get a close-up on this? If not now, then later. Okay, I mean, such beautiful work. Who designed the cover? Um, <clears throat> good, a good friend of mine's graphic artist, uh, visual artist, rather. His name is uh, Baja Ukweli. Um, he's a uh, North native, and uh, this is just one of the many things that he does. Well, we're going to first get into the <coughs> writing of this story. Uh, I guess this is what I was using for a bookmark. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but um, nothing is as it seemed deception. That means somebody's being fooled. Mm -hmm. uh, are you been fooled before? <laughs> I'm sure that we all have been fooled once or twice in our lives. But um, deception comes from you know, real life experiences, some of my experiences and some of other people that I know, their experiences, and some of the stuff is made up. So it's a, a combination of what I've been through, what other people have been through, and some imagination. Okay, you know, when you describe to get to a certain area, like you want to get to, let's say, uh, East Orange General Hospital, and you're down on Broad and Market. The way you gave directions to different areas, was that true? If I would take those streets, would I get to where you say go? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, yes, because, because I, am, I've, I was born and raised in Newark myself, and I moved on to East Orange and Irvington, and I lived in all of those areas, and I know, you know, if I, if I put a direction in there, or if I say, oh, this place, that place is in that exact spot. Even on even the the hotel on Route One and Nine is is in the exact spot. <laughs> even that uh, there's a doctor's <clears throat> office where they went to for the DNA. Exactly. And how about somebody living? Did you know somebody living in a certain house there, the Dead End Street? Uh no, that that was pretty much made up. That part I made up because I didn't. I don't even know um, if that street really exists, if that particular street exists, because I'm not familiar with the Scotch Plains area. Oh, okay, because yeah. I was thinking about traveling <laughs> <laughs> just to see what it was. But that's what got me, the way you detail mm -hmm. your stories. Mm -hmm. You could really just see it as a picture. Mm -hmm. You know, I could really visualize it, and I guess that's what made it so enjoyable for me to read, because mm -hmm. it just... It's like watching TV almost to me. The picture just came into my mind. And uh, like I told you earlier, mm -hmm. I used to, as a child, I used to love to read. Mm -hmm. You know, by the moonlight, my, fam my parents used to holler at me, put a book <laughs> down. But at a certain point in my life, you get away from it. Mm -hmm. And I haven't read a full book in years. Wow. But I had this here, I couldn't put this book down. I really enjoyed it. But the thing that got me, the deception, how people are hurt by others, mm -hmm. and how you ended this hurt. And I think we all can learn by that, because sometimes we become <coughs> revengeful, mm -hmm. or we'll let something like that bother us for the rest of our life to where we become totally self-destructive. Mm -hmm. And that's what I enjoy about it the most. And I think this is what our listening audience now should really get this book, to learn because I think most of us, like you said, has been deceived some mm -hmm. way or the other. And we have let it bother us too much. Mm -hmm. She almost did, but she didn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like that, it was over. You know, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I wish them well. <laughs> you know, you know. And, and that was it. She went on and lived her life. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you come about these characters? Well, um, I pretty much made up all of the characters, but the names in the books, is I, I got the names from people I know, pe family members, uh, people I grew up with. Your brother's is the barber shop, right? Don't you have a brother's a barber? <laughs> yeah, but that that's not him, though. Everybody asks me, like, oh, is that your brother? I'm like, no. <laughs> that character is not my brother. But no, I used, I used names, and even when I was creating that character, Tony, it wasn't even... The thought of using my brother's name, I just used the name Tony. Like that one, particularly, I didn't pick for him. I don't <coughs> want to talk too much and give away too many details mm -hmm. about the book, but do you get involved <coughs> in the character? Do you have to play this character and that character? <laughs> you have that emotion, the next emotion? Um, no, but basically some of the emotions that each character experienced, 
like I have experienced that type of emotion, some form of fashion in my life. So I just, you know, used it and I directed it towards my creativity and I put it in the book. So how long did it take you to uh, write this book? Well, that's a very funny story. <laughs> it did take me a long time to write it because I wrote one chapter mm -hmm. in 2002 when I stopped. And then two years later, I wrote some more chapters and stopped. And then I wrote up to 17 chapters. And I finally finished the book last year. So it took me a, a while to finish the book because I really wasn't, I was like self-doubting. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I, like, am I really going to do this? Like, am I really going to go through it? So I kept stopping. But I was getting feedback. I would let my friends read what I had written so far. And they were like, you should really finish this. So mm -hmm. that gave me the motivation. And then when I met Tobias, he read my work. And he was like, so when are you going to finish this? Mm -hmm. And it, he, he was such a great motivation for me to finish my work. And I finally finished. So what's that feeling it feels like when people appreciate your work? Because I know that's a good feeling for me when <coughs> I'm doing things and people come back and they appreciate what you do. So what kind of feeling do you get from that? Um. Well, at first, it was, like, surreal. I was like, wow, is this really happening? Like, I didn't know if I should be excited or if I should, you know, just, you know, be real relaxed about it. I didn't know how to handle it at first. But now I'm, I'm very, I'm a very humble person, so I'm still to this day like, wow, is this, this still is really happening. Like, even if I do a book signing and someone's like, wow, I'm so pleased to meet an author. And I'm like, wow, they're talking about me. I'm the author. <laughs> you know? It's so surreal. It really is a surreal, you know, feeling. But you know what else? <clears throat> I, reading this book, as I got into it, I said, this is a continuous story. Yeah. And that's the first thing I did when I, ca I called the bias. I said, I see this continue. This is like a soap opera. <laughs> What's going to be happening next? And sure, so like more. A yeah, a movie. Well, you know, it's, it's a life here because all these different people and the way you describe them and so detailed and all the fancy <clears throat> things that they do. You would spend money like that. And what You know, all these clothes. Did you go and search them? Because you described the type of the brand, the uh, the cologne they was mm -hmm. wearing. You I mean, you really, like I said, you drew the picture. I could smell the cologne. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I could look and see how the house was designed. You were so detailed. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Put a lot of work into this. And um, <clears throat> what part do you actually play in this, Tobias? <laughs> well, um, so I operate as an independent publisher. Um, so people, uh, writers, they submit their material to me. And... Um, <clears throat> based on uh, not just my approval, but others who, are, who I work with. Based on our approval, we decide if we want to take on this author's literary work and help launch this author's career. So when I met uh, Jackie White, she um, it was just so it's funny how things work, because I didn't realize who her brothers were. Didn't mm -hmm. realize that I had already had a, um, a connection with her brothers and knew her brothers, grew up with them, and, and things of that nature. And I never put two and two until um, later on down the road. But um, when she allowed me to um, see some of her work, I was really impressed. It had a very mature and um, poetic feel to it. So I uh, encouraged her to continue um, writing, finish it. And I gave a lot of pointers on how to develop a story. And um, she's very teachable. Because when she brought it back to me some time ago, she uh, says, hey, look, I want you to read what I you know, developed. And I was like, wow, just almost as if I, everything I said to her, <laughs> she just applied it, you know. Mm -hmm. And these are people I, I love working with, people who actually um, take their craft seriously and they want to grow and develop it. And I just, I just, this is just the beginning. This is just a, a tip of what's to come from Jackie White because I just see the potential. I mean, she's very creative. Um, and, and, and it's not just coming from me, but obviously readers um, such as yourself and others give her the same feedback or similar feedback. And um, I just see her being, uh, at some point in time of her, her career, and not